Exactly. You eliminate the fear of the sale and the fear of the cold call as soon as you reframe the way that you think about it when you move into that space. So whether it's cold calling, um, working with warm leads or, or building relationships or building rapport long term with customers, it all boils down to whether or not. Hey guys, I'm Pranel, we're Seven Tree Media, and this is to help you with your sales process. Here's my partner, Devin. What's up guys? Uh, I just want to outline the topic in today's video, which is going to be the tools to put you in the right mindset to reach out to people uh, that you're trying to sell your products to, whether that be high ticket, low ticket offers, however you wanna get in front of people. Um, we wanna help you break down getting, the, getting in the right mindset so that you can talk to the right people the right way because this is a relationship building. So um, Parnell Abs is the king of cold <laughs> calls and he's always had this knack for meeting people and uh, I'm gonna pass it over to him and he's yeah. gonna share some of the, the tools that he uses to get himself in the right mindset for cold calls. You know what, this is the perfect place to start, especially if you're starting um, a marketing company, if you need some help with your company, this is what you need to do. This is the sales process, this this, this, this is everything included right here, right? Um, I'm gonna correct you on one thing though, I never make cold calls. Not once in my life, never will I ever, right? Um, I think a lot of people take this opportunity to say, you know, when they're in sales, they automatically go, okay, how many leads, how many leads, how many leads? We've had this discussion already, right? Yeah. But instead of cold calling, cold calling a thousand people, 50 emails a day, whatever you guys are doing, mm -hmm. right? Within your network, you're going to find people that have businesses, know people that have businesses, um, you know, have, have private companies, whatever you want to talk about, they're all going to have them there, right? Uh, what you're, what you're going to do is just, you want to build rapport with all these people. So if they're, if they're your friends already, it's no problem. It really is no problem, right? I mean, you have a more robotic approach to it um, and you're more the, not the cold calling king, um, but you're like, you're the guy that gets in there, gets the meetings done, right? And it, it's it's interesting to see you work the way I and, and myself work together because we really shouldn't be working together if you think about it. We're very polar opposite when uh, it comes to approaching what a cold call looks like. Absolutely, right? Yeah. So my, my whole process towards it is knowing who uh, you want to approach, right? Kn knowing their business inside and out, first and foremost. You have to know everything about what that person loves to do, personally, financially, uh, business-wise, everything. And everything about their business, who they sell to, what they sell. Uh, you have to know their clientele. You have to do their avatar, their client avatar, like we talk about all the time, yeah, so right? So why is it important to do research on your client? What does so, that help you with? So one thing that businesses really love is you can't help a business unless you know what that business needs. So if a business doesn't need marketing and you approach them with marketing, it's going to be an automatic no, right? Our whole goal with this, because we have our, we're so diverse in our company, our whole goal is to get our foot in the door because we can pretty much help you with whatever your needs are. You just might not, might not know what those needs are right now. Right. So we're here to help you figure those out, put the pieces in place. Um, and every business is different. Every company we work with is different, right? So it's a good thing for me. For me, it's great. For you, it's probably a nightmare because you're so robotic. Like I said, you have a, a process you go through. Why don't you tell so these that's, guys that? So that's step one of the process is actually getting to know somebody, researching them, figuring out what it is that you can help that person with. And, and we remove the, uh, this, this is what you helped me with in, in my process was I thought it had to be a certain language. There had to be a certain script and you had to follow this script and dress and a certain you, way. Yeah. Yeah. If you don't <laughs> fit into this box then you're never going to get clients. And that actually wasn't the case. What ended up happening was inside of that research, you humanize your customers. So whether or not it's B to B or B to C, you're, you're, the objective is to know what the needs of that person are. So if you can't clearly identify that, um, that's something that you really need to take into, uh, into consideration when you're trying to set up uh, any type of meeting or when you're trying to reach out to somebody on a cold call. So not having the proper research, not knowing what somebody needs, not being able to um, communicate in the language that they use. Not being able to identify their issues. Yeah, exactly. Right? It's immediately going to show that person that you don't actually care and you're just there for the numbers. Absolutely. And and we, we may think that, you know, if you follow a certain process or you do this or you do that in a robotic way, mm -hmm. which is, you know, the old school. I remember going door to door and, and having a script to say at the door. And if I screwed up the script halfway through, like you could tell people were already <laughs> closing the door, <laughs> yeah. right? But the minute I stepped back from the script and I, and I humanized the person that I was talking to, it made a huge difference for mm -hmm. my ability to connect with them and serve them. And at the end of the day, if you're running a business, that's your objective is to serve people uh, with whatever solution it is that you have developed through your talents. Taking that now from 
that cold call, that reach out. Mm -hmm. I have a, a three block structure that I like to use right. to help people, um, to help myself and help other people connect with the right people. So it starts with that research and then we move into the second phase, which is um, finding a way to congratulate a person or celebrate their wins. And when you can celebrate their wins. Ah, uh, yes, I remember you going through this with me. We had this whole conversation. He's, he's been trying to get me more roboticized like he is. <laughs> it's not going to work, but it's actually kind of wearing off of me because he has systems set up where, you know, when you, when you, do, the, you do the research on them, right, and then you're going into every other process, it's almost like I'm thinking on a different wavelength saying, okay, you want to get to this step and I'm trying to get to this step. How do we merge the two? So taking it from, from, from step one is, is doing the research. research. Step two is um, following up and reaching out to them and celebrating. Oh yes, the congratulations. Win. Yeah, yes, yeah. the congratulations. You just got to call it the congratulations. Yeah. No, call it celebrating a win. We marketers. Right. So the congratulations is basically looking at something that they've accomplished in, in whatever it is that they're trying to do and letting them know that you appreciate the effort that they've put into that because that's their life work. Yeah. You recognize what they've tried to do and you just want to help them you know, fulfill what they were trying. Yeah. Right? Maybe it wasn't working or maybe it was working. Maybe it was, maybe it was the greatest um, ad campaign you've ever seen and maybe it was the shittiest one, right? Yeah. Either way, recognize <clears> it and say, listen, either if it was really good, you may have fallen off here or it could have failed here. Um, but this part was really, really good. Let's try and extrapolate from that, right? Yeah. So understanding that um, everybody likes uh, when you when you're when you're celebrating for them. It's just it's the same idea as a, as a birthday. Like congratulations, right? yeah, birth, yeah, happy birthday, ha having a graduation. Right. So when a when a business person is out there or or a, a consumer is out there doing whatever they're doing, um, there is something about them that they identify themselves as. And when you know what that is and you celebrate it with them, it puts you on their team. And when you're on their mm. team, it makes it easier for you to communicate with them uh, transparently, which is the end result. Is you, they have a problem and you have a solution. So trying to uh, communicate that with them starts with celebrating that win and making sure that they're, they're, um, they know that you care about what it is mm. that they're trying to create that's, for themselves. That's a fantastic point. And there's, there's one thing you said that you did it really touches base with either my style or your style, right? Where you're being on the same team. Yeah. I think most salespeople, and this is what I get from, I mean, telemarketers, cold, all, this, all the bullshit that most people do, you know, people don't want to hear from cold calls. They don't want to hear from cold emails. We're sick of scarcity. We're sick of the panic buying. We're sick yeah. of, yeah, th and the fear, the fear emotion right. they don't, and being they, used exactly. to make us most make a decision. And most importantly, people don't want to deal with people they haven't dealt with before. Right. Right, and I think that's a very there has to be a distinction there because if you're on the same team as them now, you're no longer somebody they haven't worked with before because you're on their team. Yeah, you're on their team. There's the the subtle nuances there are so deep that I don't think many salespeople actually get it. None of none of the none of the great ones will ever tell you differently. They'll tell you and that that's, that's why, how it how it's done. Yeah, and that's why the script fails mm -hmm. every time. Absolutely. If you follow a script and you say things like you are reading them off of a piece of paper, it's gonna sound like that and it's gonna sound like you actually don't care about the person that mm -hmm. you're communicating with. So once you have your research and you understand the customer that you're serving, you move into that place where you're celebrating the wins with them. The final thing is is transparency. Mm. If you yes. use transparency in the way that you communicate with them, it doesn't come off salesy, first of all, because that's the, the biggest thing everybody hates is mm -hmm. we, we love buying things, but we hate <laughs> being sold to as human beings. So removing mm -hmm. that pressure off the table and just being like, hey, I know that you may or may not experience this problem. Is this solution something that you may be interested in? And as soon as you have that information, mm. that is power. Now you know that you can put that one down and move on if it's a no, or you can close on that because you can move it forward with their interests already yep. established. And a quick story for that. I mean, I remember the first client we got, you know, um, we had an, an, another partner with us. And for some reason we were, um, we went into the meeting. I remember me and you specifically saying, let's walk into this meeting like we don't give a fuck if we get it or not. Yeah. You have to care about their needs rather than what you guys need. We are desperate for money. Right. We're desperate. We're like, okay, if we go in there, you know, des smelling of desperation for money, <laughs> we're never going to get the, we're never going to get the client. Yeah. So what do they need more than anything? And how can we provide that? Right. At a fair cost. Yes. And, and that's one other thing we have to touch on is price because I guarantee you guys, most business owners won't even look at the price. 
Yeah, it, you know, if packaging of your of your product and the pricing and all that stuff, as long as that's that's already established, selling your product's going to be no problem. Absolutely. So because it's not a sale, it's right. not a sale then. Exactly. You eliminate the fear of the sale and the fear of the cold call as soon as you reframe the way that you think about it when you move into that space. So whether it's cold calling, um, working with warm leads, or or building relationships or building rapport long term with customers. It all boils down to whether or not you care about that person on the other side instead of caring about the numbers. When you mm. come, when you show up at that meeting, and, and I mean, we get it. We came from a shoestring budget media company, you know, not filming things on a yeah. cell phone, yeah, doing our best to try and yeah. make something happen, and and realizing, you know, it we, it might not be to the caliber, but still going through the going through the motions, going of, yeah, going through the whole process you know, to falling on your face. So we get it. We we've been in yeah. that situation where, <laughs> where d disparity, being desperate for that money, yeah. ch it changes. As soon as you get a small check, that first client, it changes yeah. the game for you in whatever industry you're in. <laughs> And, and, and you can use that mm -hmm. to your benefit. But at the end of the day, if you didn't care about that person and who it was that you were serving, right. they're going to know and they're going to immediately say Listen, no. that's one of the things I see all the time. Listen, it is – transparency works in two ways, right? You can either be extremely transparent that you're desperate for money or you can be extremely transparent that the service you provide is what this client needs. Yeah. Right? Um, and it comes down to you don't even have to convince them at yeah. times. Yeah. You say, here's, here's what we offer. And if you're interested, cool. If you spend any time on trying to convince somebody, it's a waste. Yeah, I mean, you're not gonna you're not gonna change somebody's mind. And and if you do, the one percent of the time that you change somebody's mind, it's gonna be against their will, and they're gonna push back. They're mm -hmm. gonna push back the whole time. They're gonna be a hard client to serve. It's gonna make it more difficult for you in the long run mm -hmm. if you're tricking people into buying your product. Absolutely. So it's, it always comes back to whether or not you know your client and you are genuinely serving them with what you have. Mm -hmm. And if you don't think that your thing has value, figure why are out you selling way, it? Yeah, figure out a way to add more no, value. No, why are you selling it? <laughs> stop selling it. If you don't think it has value, stop selling it and get something that has value. There's not a day goes by that I don't talk to one of my clients or potential, potential clients. Um, it's one of the things I do on a regular basis simply because they're my friends and I want to see how they are. Um, because you'll notice that once you have years into this thing, you're going to start noticing that these clients are now your friends. You're starting to go golfing. You're starting to go swimming. Your kids know each other. You're at, you're at picnics together. You'll start noticing that these people are not only your clients, but becoming trusted, valued friends of yours. And you want to nurture that as much as you can, right? Yeah. I think it's one of the things that people pass up all the time, or they'll make a call once every six months, once the contract is up and say, Hey, haven't heard from you a little bit, but Hey, I just want to let, let you know the contract's coming up. I want to know if you want to resign. Well, at that point, the client's going, why would I resign with you? You haven't, you haven't made any fulfillments. You haven't done anything for me. Yeah. Or even if you have met every single term, you know, maybe they don't trust you anymore because you weren't um, as forth with, with all the information or getting Proactive. to know them a little more. Yes, thank you. To getting to know them a little more. You didn't take the time and the effort to understand what they needed even beyond the services that you offer, right? I hear companies often complain about um, customer loyalty being a problem. Mm. And customer loyalty is never a problem if you actually cared about that customer. 100%. If you deliver on what it was you were supposed to deliver on, that's only one small piece right. of it. But if, again, you, this is going back to humanizing the sale, making sure that you understand who's on the other side of that and, and the value that you're bringing to that person. And it doesn't end at that closing. And I, I hate the term and, that I, ABC thing. Always, always be closing. closing. Yeah. That, that, that ain't it anymore. It's always be talking because it's always be in communication. Always be always communicating. Be, yeah. <laughs> always Very be different communicating. Than closing. Um, Very different. Yeah, and that's you know, and honestly, we should probably just leave it there because we have a bunch of other things to go to. Check it out. The series is coming, guys. This is part one. We're gonna have a million parts. Keep it locked. Seven Tree Media, Devin Purnell. We're out.